now. cheering and everything uh welcome to of course uh the romania show we had a little technical issue with the end of yesterday's show uh what can you do we're getting things fixed um top story of the day of course adrian nastase the former pre prime minister red team prime minister of romania oh you know it's like i'm tired and I'm angry, but I'm also a little bit just, you know, worn out dealing with this because yesterday he got convicted um, in his court case. He actually has three court cases going on. Uh, two haven't finished yet. One of them finished yesterday. And he was convicted of, he was sentenced to two years in jail. Now, of course, remaining in uh, courts are a little bit different. When you're in a criminal case like this, you don't actually sit in the courtroom. So he was actually at home. Uh, chilling in his house. I got to see it yesterday on TV. Uh, it's an incredibly luxurious house, which, of course, he paid for by stealing from the government of Romania, the people of Romania, defrauding the government out of millions of euros, uh, put in his own pocket, corruption trial, literally over 1,000 witnesses. Uh, the judges and the lawyers, they went through all of this crap and apparently decided that there was enough proof that he was guilty, so they gave him a two-year sentence. Now, according to Romanian law, if you're over 60 years old and blah, 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 some other stuff, you only have to serve with about a third of your sentence. So, maximum, you know, six, seven months. Some people were saying eight. I'm not a lawyer here in Romania, but, you know, he's not even going to have to do the two years in jail. Um, he's an old man. He's 62 years old. He looks like he's about a thousand years old which I mentioned on a different show, of episode of the Romania show. And so, yesterday, BAM! Here comes the decision from the court. Guilty. Uh, sometimes in Romania they have what's called suspended sentences, kind of like parole. You know, you don't actually have to go to jail, but, you know, you're in trouble. In this case, he actually had to go to the slammer. Go to the big house. And so, police drive up to his house last night. Knock, knock. It's a luxury mansion that he built with his stolen money. And, he, you know, this wasn't on camera, but uh, I read the reports today. Uh, the police went inside and said, uh, Mr. Anastasia, blah, 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 I'm going to take you to the jail. And he goes, oh, hey, can I get some books to take with me? Now, the guy used to be professor. Um, of course, he's well known now, uh, especially if you've been watching the Romania show, you know that he was the professor who gave Victor Ponta, the current prime minister, his uh, doctoral uh, thesis. And... Uh, you know, Nastasia was a professor. She was like, hey, can I go get some books out of my room? And uh, they're like, yeah, dude, you know, go ahead. And then Nastasia, this is according to the report, said, I'm sorry you have to witness this. Runs in his room, he grabs a 38 revolver, Smith & Wesson, which is an uh, American gun, by the way, of all things, you know, how ironic is that? And blam, he shoots himself one time. Now, he's not dead. Uh, I saw the reports today. He's actually uh, apparently doing okay. Uh, he's not even got a serious injury. Uh, he shot himself in the neck or the throat. It remains the same word. And, uh, you know, they were asking him, like, uh, the doctors, like, you know, is he going to be able to talk again? And they're like, yeah, he's going to be fine. Yeah, he's, you know, he had a, a gunshot wound to the, you know, neck. But he's going to be fine. He's just going to have a scar. So, now I've seen enough, I've seen a lot of gunshot wounds in my life, and a 38 uh, isn't the biggest gun, it isn't the biggest caliber gun, but, you know, obviously close range, just about any gun can really hurt, especially, you know, the neck is a rather soft part of the body, a lot of times people, you know, I hate to be macabre here, but, you know, people shoot themselves in the head, there's a really thick bone here, and I've seen 22, you know, 22s just literally bounce right off people's skulls, 38 is not that big of a caliber. Um, it is possible to kill yourself that way, the way you do it. Uh, there is a little, you know, soft part here, or a lot of times, you know, you put the gun in your mouth and blam, you're dead. Well, Nastasia shot himself in the neck. Well, if he can still speak, and the doctor says he's going to be fine in that respect, and, you know, he didn't shoot himself this way, and then it went out the back and, you know, blew out his spinal cord or something, you know, he clearly shot himself, like, sideways. Now, 
some reports, original reports said, oh, like, the police were busting in the door, and he was like, oh, I gotta do it, man, I gotta blah. And so, you know, he shot himself in the neck because he didn't have time, or the police were on his case. No, I read the reports. Uh, you know, it happened last night. It's been 12 hours or more, or actually almost 24 hours now, of, you know, reporting. The police said, no. He said, excuse me, uh, can I get some books to take with me? And they're like, oh, sure, yeah, what the hell, man? You know, old man, you want to get some books to go to prison, so what? And he goes in there, you know, blam. And his son uh, said, you know, he left a suicide note. It was all pre-planned out ahead of time. Of course, nobody from the... In Romania, I should mention, in America, if you're American, um, you actually have a right to own a gun. And there has to be specific reasons why you cannot own a gun. In Romania, it's the opposite. You don't have a right to a gun. To even be able to carry a gun, you have to go down to um, the local police and get permit for it. And you got to go to a psychologist and they got to, you know, clear you of your, you know, make sure you're mentally crazy or whatever. And, you know, here's Ponta, this guy who apparently has been telling his friends that he's been suicidal. He clearly was suicidal because he wrote this note. I'm saying according to the reports, I, you know, I haven't read it. I'll get to that in a minute. But, um, you know, and he's under three court trials. All of them very serious court trials. This is not, oh, he stole a loaf of bread. This is he's defrauded the state for millions of dollars. And, uh, you know, did anybody think to take his gun away from him? No, apparently he used his own gun. Registered gun right to him. So there you go, geniuses. And remain to let him have his gun. You know, his friends didn't stop him. His family didn't stop him. The police didn't stop him. And the courts didn't stop him. So, knock, knock, police come in. Can I get my books? Blam, he shoots himself one time in the neck. You know, I, like this. Ugh, like sideways. So then, you know, there's an official photograph running in all the news papers today um, of him in the ambulance being treated and he's wearing this really like fancy like going out in town having a drink at the you know continental hotel kind of scarf elegantly knotted around his neck like it's winter's day and he's gonna go ice skating and i'm thinking to myself you know like what kind of medical treatment is that i'm not a doctor you know i worked in a hospital before but you know, I'm not a doctor, man, what do I know? I don't know medical stuff. But, you know, if the guy injured himself in any way to his neck, the first thing you're going to do is remove anything that's around his neck so you can treat him. But he's just sitting there in the bed, and doop de doop de do He's just chilling, and, uh, you know, he's wearing his fancy scarf, and that's all you can say about it. And I don't know exactly what the deal with that is, but that is what's going on. So, instead of going to jail, now he's chilling in a fancy hospital. And, of course, he's surrounded by all of his friends and family. And, oh, poor Nastasia, shot him, poor guy, blah, blah, blah. Instead of, you know, hey, you were a crook and you finally got some, you know, justice against you done. And of course, all the red team, Ponta, Iliescu, the old president, all these dudes, you know, who are big freaking supporters of this guy. Um, you know, they're like, oh, well, oh, Basescu made him do it. It was uh, the terrible things that the president did. And, you know, if he hadn't been pressured by the president, you know, then he would still be alive and all this other crap. I mean, he's still, he is alive. I mean, he would still be, you know, uninjured or whatever. What a bunch of crap. I mean, the guy clearly stole millions of euros worth of money from the people of Romania. He had an enormously long court case with all of his high-paid fancy lawyers. You know, some indigent off the street with a public defender. He pulled every string that he could, including, remember, on the Romania show, we've only been on there like two, three weeks already we've been covering this stuff. You know, uh, Ponta hired a guy named Adrian Balaban Grajdan, and the morning after he was installed in his position, he called Nastasia at you know, 5.53 in the morning and was like, hey, dude, can you draw that case against me? Yeah, sure, boss, you got it. So, you know, Nastasia pulled every string that he possibly could and then he lost. You know, too bad, so sad, dude. You know, everyone, quite frankly, uh, who cares about justice was glad because it was pretty obvious the guy was a crook. So then he gets, uh, you know, the sentence yesterday, and he's chilling at home, you know, watching the TV or whatever he's doing, as he, you know, plagiarizing some more academic papers or whatever. 
and you know, knock knock, here comes the police, and what does he do? Blam, blam, meow. So, did he even shoot himself? No, did he? Did he? Did he do anything more than just like a scratch? I gotta ask. I mean, because really, I mean, doctors in Romania are not that incompetent. You don't let a guy just wear a scarf around his neck unless he's got a tiny scratch, and you're trying to, you know, feel bad for the guy because you're trying to cover up his dignity or whatever. You know, my guess is number one, minimum, he's the world's worst suicide uh, person because you know, if you watch a movie ever or Google it. You know, you can figure out how to shoot yourself. I had to be so sick because it's horrible. And, you know, a lot of people, genuine people, have been suffering in Romania, including people who committed suicide and tried to. A lot of people forget. A guy last year, uh, you know, jumped from the balcony of the parliament into the middle of the, you know, the representatives of the parliament because he was so upset about all the austerity measures. Now, that poor guy, I feel bad for. That guy is a poor, normal guy, and his life is suffering. And, you know, he's basically saying, hey, dude, you know, I'm trying to get some attention. Did anyone pay attention to him, you know, for more than a minute? No. But Ms. Dawson, you know, he's some rich old bastard. He's, you know, even if he did go to jail, what do you think he's going to be, like, you know, doing a hard time in the, you know, with a bunch of thugs? No, he's going to be chilling and, you know, smoking a pipe and reading his books. But he can't do eight months, you know? You know, political opponents of the communist regime who literally did no harm to anyone... You know, they were doing two years of hard time getting beaten and whipped and all this other stuff. But, you know, Nastasia in a modern, you know, Romania with visitors every freaking day and cameras and everything else. What are they going to do to him? You know, oh, hey, go clean up your cell. Well, boo-hoo. You know, there's people in Romania who have never committed a crime of any kind who live in worse conditions in some of those prisons in Romania. They're not going to stick them in the old crabby one. They're going to stick them in the fairly decent one. And of course, you know, well, oh, Busnescu made him try to kill himself. Yeah, right. Um, the guy is just a coward. And see, the way it works, it's always amazing, because if you look at, you know, Ceausescu, he gets booed like twice. What does he do? Ow, gets in his helicopter, tries to bug out of there. Shavi ran, another little criminal, he, you know, ran away. Saddam was saying, hi, in the hole. You know, these guys, they get one ounce of resistance, and they bug her out of there, and uh, I guess nobody wanted to take freaking Nastasi, and so he, he was like, oh, 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 goodbye, cruel world. <laughs> goodbye, cruel world. That's how he's going to be talking from now on, you know, only, it's, I'm not a crook, it was all business who made me do it. And then, you know, of course, you got to think of the guy's family, you know, okay, he's going to jail, the family can visit him. But you commit suicide, what are they going to do? They're going to be destroyed. So he doesn't care. He doesn't even care about the Romanian people. He don't care about his own family. He only cares about his own damn comfort and pride. So, on top of everything else, Anastasia's son, who, you know, he's not a politician. I hate to really bring him into this because, you know, it's not his fault who his dad is, but he goes on Facebook. First he says, oh, my poor daddy's sick. Okay, you know, all right, that's kind of, you know, what do you want? He's a kid. And, well, he's not, he's not a young child, but, you know, his dad to shot himself, if he even did, and, no, oh, my dad said terrible stuff, but then he goes, hey, my dad left our family a suicide letter, and instead of just keeping it a private thing between the family, I'm going to go have a press conference on tomorrow, this Friday, he's going to do this press conference and read the suicide letter for the whole world. Now, why would he do that? You know, besides the fact that he's obviously a dumbass. He's doing it because, oh, porn is done. And there's already people. I already got Facebook full of messages and all kinds of other messages. Oh, you're being so mean to him. Oh, blah, blah. Fuck him. <laughs> you know, and people say, oh, well, well you're attacking this dog's and pumped all the time. You must be a big fan of the other team, you know. No, give me a break. You know, it's like these people, I swear, you know, they can't understand the concept of, you know, fairness and equality and, you know, honesty is something that should be emulated, and I don't care who breaks it. I don't care. If my best friend in the whole wide world, number one, plagiarized his own doctoral dissertation, which I don't know why he would do that, but, you know, let's imagine that it, I, he did. Okay? Uh, I found out. Hey, dude. Oh, man, what are you doing? Uh, blah, blah, plagiarized. I said, well, dude, you know, that's some shameful shit. You need to, you know, 
they, you know, my friend's not the prime minister of a country, but you know, I'd say, you need to give up your doctoral degree, you need to turn it back, you need to turn yourself in, you're fraud. That's my friend, you know? Because I care about these things. Of course, I don't have a friend like that, because my friends are honest, good people, but you know, I don't care what party you belong to, I don't care what color your political pamphlets are in. If you're a crook, you're a crook, it's always wrong! Oh, well, you forgot that um, Bosescu did this. I don't give a crap. Okay, that's a separate issue. Bosescu did something wrong. Screw him, too. If he gets convicted in a trial, go to jail, too. Don't care who you are. You know, if you do a major crime, do the major time. I don't know how you know complicated that is to understand, but... <sighs> Another person got convicted today of uh, a big... Mafia dude, he's called the Baron in Romania. Basically, he's a mafia. It's not you know mafia like the Sicilian mafia. People get a little confused when I say the word mafia. His name is uh, Sorino Vidio Vuntu. He's uh, used to be quite a powerful media guy. He owned a bunch of TV channels and newspapers and everything else, but it fell out of favor and got caught red-handed on the telephone bribing some people. So he was doing one year in jail. You know, one year is not that much, but at least it's something. And, uh, you know, I saw him today. Oh, poor guy. I mean, you know, yesterday he was in perfect health. Today he's like, oh, I'm in a wheelchair. Oh, wheel me into the jail. <laughs> so pitiful. You know, like, oh, he's an old man. He's going to die. He's in a wheelchair. No bullet. B.S. You know, he just got caught. You know, this plagiarism crap from Ponta continues to unfold. I saw yesterday. You know, already it's been proven that he plagiarized in his, you know, doctoral dissertation, which Adria Anastasi approved. <laughs> good, good paper there, Ponta. And then number two, I noticed that Mong, who is the former education minister that Ponta appointed, who had to resign because he was called plagiarizing ten times, uh, you know, he's supposed to have a case in front of the ethics committee, you know, the minister of education has a, Ministry of Education has like this ethic committee, ethics committee that they you know rule on plagiarism and that kind of stuff. So even though he resigned and you know at least ten articles were dug up that he and his stupid wife plagiarized from other people, you know officially, I guess you could say he hasn't been convicted of plagiarism, which means he still is technically a professor at a university. So there's this ethics committee, which of course you know Ponta's guys, you know, set up or excuse me, got you know put his guys on that thing via interim idiot education minister. But today I read that, oh, well, there's never been a case yet officially filed with the Ethics Committee for Mom. So, you know, is there ever going to be a case filed against this guy or are we just going to let him be a professor, you know, with ten, at least ten articles known that he's plagiarized? Oh, well, we don't care. Doop -de -doop. Now we're on education minister number four. Meanwhile, Ponta not even been in office two dang months. We're on education minister number four. We're also on education, uh, cultural minister number two. I don't know if I got to it yesterday because I got cut off by the minister of culture resigned for being a little crooked bastard. And now a different one's in there or nominated. Of course, it'll be approved because Ponta controls the parliament. Well, it turns out he's a plagiarist too. I'm not a plagiarist, blah, blah. All these guys are exactly the same, you know? And then Ponta, oh, this is what I got sidetracked from. So we got one former education minister. No case has been filed against him, even though he's a plagiarist. We got a cultural minister, now another damn plagiarist. Ponta, the prime minister, plagiarizes doctoral dissertation. And then yesterday I saw, this is where I was getting to, you know, Ponta wrote a book, or he co-wrote a book in 2010, just two years ago. Not a little boring book that nobody gives a crap about, but you know, it's like a vanity thing. Hey, I wrote this book, blah, 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 about international law and all this crap. Well, <laughs> plagiarize that one too! And, you know, the most shameful part of it, besides just stealing nonstop, which is, you know, on defense that people actually do the real work. But, you know, there is a passage in there about Pinochet. Now, the original work was written before Pinochet died. He's the former uh, dictator of Chile, by the way, in case you don't know who that is. And, you know, there was a big, you know, whoop de whoop at the time, whether he was going to, you know, serve any jail time or whatever, blah, blah. Now, the author, the original author, wrote the book, Pinochet was still alive. So, you know, he, was, he had a couple paragraphs talking about what could possibly happen to him. Because remember, Ponta's supposed to be an expert in law. 
He has a doctoral dissertation in international law, and he used to be a prosecutor. So he's supposed to be this expert on the law. You know, Ken, for some reason, all of his friends are all criminals, but, you know, that's the way it goes. So the original text that he stole from was talking about Pinochet and what could happen to him because he was still alive. Well, he died four years before Ponto wrote this book. But he still got exactly the same paragraph in there talking about as though Pinochet was still alive because he just copied it. He didn't even read it. I mean, it'd be like me talking about, oh, uh, if Saddam Hussein could possibly face justice. Well, everyone knows now Saddam Hussein's dead. If I wrote this paper or book, you know, a couple years ago, well, that would have been fine. But, you know, that's not what happened, so. <sighs> you know, he plagiarizes everything. I don't, I'm, I'm not even sure if his name is really Victor Ponta. Maybe he stole that name, too. And then, you know, this big European Council meeting's coming. The journalist from the German newspaper was saying, like, dude, what does Ponte got to do before he's going to resign? Does he have to, like, literally steal the spoons from the meeting? You know, the European Council meeting before he even pays attention to him? Uh, and, uh, you know, Ponte, I mean, this, this crack, this crack cement, but honestly, the guy really does. Just because it's so ridiculous. You know, the big thing that's been going on is, you know, who's going to go to this meeting on the 28th to represent Remain? Is it going to be the president? Which, as far as I'm concerned, that's what the law says. Or is it going to be the Prime Minister, which is Ponte? Oh, the Parliament passed a declaration saying Ponte's going to go. Well, it turns out, of course, that it has no legal weight. And they could say, you know, declare jelly beans are the national dish of Romania. And it wouldn't make any difference legally. So then Ponta, you know, the, there's paperwork that has to be filed. And they say, uh, you know, hey, dude... Um, you know, where's the paperwork from Romania? And they say, well, here's our official delegation. Bezesco's not on it. Ponta, of course, is, because he filed the paperwork. And then, he said, I'm, I'm not going to even let him on the plane. I'm not even going to let that president of ours on the plane. And if he tries to take his own government plane, I'm going to deny the, you know, the request for fuel. You know, just being incredibly childish. Of course, all, and then, you know, he was on, uh, TV or the newspaper today saying, oh, everybody knows those plagiarism charges, are, that's just political vendetta. No, no. It's really obvious. Plagiarism is not a very difficult thing to figure out. You look at the text on the left, you look at the text on the right. This one was written five years before yours. It's word for word. There's no citation. There's no end note. There's no footnote. You stole it. Over half your thing is plagiarized anyway. Only a third of his book is plagiarized, which is an improvement, I guess. So here's the thing. He says this paperwork to the European, you know, council saying, oh, blah, blah, who, here's who's going, and it's not the president, but guess who's supposed to sign that paper? There's a little line on the bottom that says, signed and approved by the president of Romania, which, of course, he didn't sign it. So, honest to goodness, I don't know what's going to happen. We're going to see. But Ponte ain't going to resign, you know, unless he's literally caught, you know, having sex with a dead baby or something. I mean, I don't think anything else is going <laughs> to knock him off his turn. He don't care. Completely, you know, not only that, but, uh, you know, Nature, the, it's a British journal, I said it might have been American originally, it's a British journal, a very respected journal, you know, they wrote about this stuff. And while Ponta got his people, you know, this is the, officially the government of Romania responding to Nature. He got them to write a letter to Nature in English, uh, which is on the, you know, you can see it on my blog or my website or wherever else, it's, it's written in English, so if you speak English, you can read it. Doesn't he translate it? Well, first of all, I mean, there were so many mistakes in there. It was outrageous. I, I think a, a five-year-old could write a better letter in English. You know, five-year-old American. You know, just hideous misspellings and, you know, the wrong verb and, you know, just not even, you know, close to being grammatically correct at all. That's understandable because, of course, it's written in retarded English. And then, of course, uh, they had all these allegations like, oh, you're, you're taking a stance in Romania's politics. Okay, the journal Nature is uh, roughly 140 years old. The government, you know, the nation of Romania, the modern nation is only about, you know, what, 90 years old. And even the kingdom of Romania, which came before that, is still less old than the journal Nature. So the journal Nature has been around longer than two different variations of the country of Romania, which of course you know didn't properly exist until now, ninety years ago. They're literally the one of the most respectable and you know awesomely you know they're, they're just incredibly respected. 
throughout the whole world because of their fair and balance and all this other crap. And they're like, oh, well, they're, they're taking a stance against Romanian politics. You play politics. No, they're not. You know, if, if someone could prove that, I don't know, Basisco or somebody else in the opposition party, you know, was a plagiarist too, they'd print that too. They don't care. You show them the evidence, they examine it, they publish the results. That's what science is about. See, Romanians don't understand. Like, it's like science. It's like, you know, it's like if I said, oh, here, here's a glass, oh, here's a glass of water, and if I spill it, you know, and it's in an orange cup, then, it, oh, it's the red team made it spill. No. You know, facts are facts. If you're a plagiarist, you're a plagiarist. It's got nothing to do with what particular party you belong to or what's going on in Romania. Uh, you know, science, which, uh, nature is a science journal, it's not about pleasing people, okay? There are people who spend a lot of money on scientific research and they're hoping for, I don't know, a cure for AIDS or whatever else. You know, these pharmaceutical companies. Well, sometimes it doesn't work. It doesn't work. This, you, you try the experiment and it turns out your miracle drug doesn't work. Well, you know what? Too bad. Science isn't about, you know, true science is not about, you know, pleasing you and giving you pleasing results. It's not advertising. You do the experiment, you see what happens. You examine the academic papers, and if it's plagiarism, it's plagiarism. Well, Ponta wrote this letter. I mean, the government of Romania, which he theoretically represents, you know, oh, yo, you're smearing our guy, and it's all this political crap as though, you know, literally, you know, oh, it's unbelievable. You know, Romania. And the worst part is, and I'm going to be frank with you, okay. So there's a greedy, stupid man who's the prime minister. There's another greedy, stupid man who, you know, I shot myself in the neck. Try to get out of jail. Those two guys are idiots. Okay. But what really, I think, makes me the most angry, the most upset, is that literally no one else cares. A lot of people are feeling sorry for him. Oh, he's under attack. And other people, you know, oh, just politics. You know, they really think, you know, everything's politics, which, of course, some of it is, especially between, the, you know, different TV stations or whatever, but or different, you know, politician A says something bad about politician B. Well, that is politics. But when it comes to breaking the law and stealing and being a crook and you can't even read your own constitution and European Union treaty and understand what the basic rules are, you know, that transcends politics. You're supposed to be accountable and be an honorable and, you know, honest and decent person. Especially when you represent a nation of millions of people. That's just a fact. That's the way it should be. That's the way it is in other countries. Other countries, you know, someone does something shameful, you know, there's enough pressure on them, you know, moral pressure, that they just resign. They quit. They say, okay, I'm out of here. Um, but nobody's putting any pressure on them. I haven't seen anybody put any pressure on them. There's a few news cameras stuck in their faces. So what? People don't care, you know, they write a few angry letters on the newspaper or website, but there's nobody in the street, there's nobody doing any petitions, there's no mass action, there's more people, you know, organizing for bicycle rights. And not that I'm against bicycles, I think they're a wonderful mode of transportation, but, you know, there's more organization in promoting the use of riding a bicycle in this country, simply because uh, those people, you know, don't want to get run over by cars, so they want their own lanes and all this stuff. You know, like I said, I support that, but, you know, is that really the, a bigger priority than your prime minister being a crook? No, well, I guess it's not. So, people here don't care, you know, and, and what really surprised me here in, in Coolidge, where I live, you know, there's a lot of university students, and I know a lot of them uh, even working on their doctoral dissertation. It takes a long time. It takes years. And you have to do a lot of work. You got to read a lot of books. You got to, you know, write this really long paper. It could be 400 pages long, all full of citations and notes. And it's got to be approved by a committee. And, you know, it's, it's hard work. And here's a guy who just steals his own doctorate. You know, cheapens the value of a Romanian doctorate. You know, imagine you're a Romanian student. You get a doctoral, you get a doctorate here at Romanian University. And you go to England. Or Germany or France or wherever, you know, America and say, oh, yeah, I'm a doctor. And go, well, you got your doctorate in Romania, so who cares? You, everyone knows that you can just buy it. Oh, well, we don't care. We'll just sit around and party and have fun. Once again, we're all waiting for, I don't know, um, I guess Stefan Chilmani, Stefan Chilmani to come back. And, uh, 
you know, clean up of the house or blood zippage or whatever, but, you know. Don't take away our internet. Like the Octa Treaty, the Acta Treaty. You know, there's 5,000 people on the street protesting that because, you know, they might not be able to download True Blood, but, or whatever stupid show, House, or I can't remember the names of the popular shows. Oh, don't take away my free internet. But, you know, go ahead and have a prime minister as a crook and not one single person will do anything about it. So, anyway, that's Romania. I mean, that's uh, the Romanian show for today. I uh, appreciate you watching. And, uh... I guess I will see you tomorrow, hopefully with some more positive stories. Bye.